Welcome back. Today's adventure brings us in search again for more Nevada historical markers. Let's start by searching for Nevada State Historical Markers numbers 111 through 115. Located in a dirt pullout along eastbound US 50 and not too far from marker number 110, we find our next marker, marker number 111, Edwards Creek Valley. Edwards Creek Valley. Abundant grass and brush found near springs and intermittent streams in Edwards Creek Valley were important ecological areas for Native Americans. Shoshone Indians wandered seasonally to gather wild seeds and small game and settled here in winter camps. Later, northern Paiutes also lived in the valley. In 1854, Colonel John Reese discovered a route through Edwards Creek Valley that was shorter than the Humboldt Trail. Established by surveyor James Simpson in 1859, it was followed by the Pony Express, the Overland Telegraph, and the Overland Mail stages. In 1862, Austin Gold Rush Passageway too. The route remained as the region's principal commercial artery until 1880. Nevada State Historical Marker number 111. Let's head north, back up to Interstate 80, and head east towards Carlin. Located in Carlin, on the corner of Hamilton Street and B Street, we will find our next marker, marker number 112, Carlin. Carlin. Carlin, the oldest town in Elko County, was established as a railroad division point in December 1868 by the Central Pacific Railroad. When the railroad tracks reached the Carlin Meadows, always a favorite stopping place for wagon trains along the California Immigrant Trail, construction crews laid out a town site and built a large round house and shops. Central Pacific officials named the town after William Passmore Carlin, a Union general who served his country with distinction during and after the Civil War. During the 1870s and early 1880s, Carlin competed with Elko, Palisade, and Winnemucca for the staging and freighting businesses of the many mining camps north and south of the railroad. In 1965, the town became the principal shipping point for the nearby Carlin Gold Mine, the second largest gold producer in the U.S. Carlin is still a principal division point on the Union Pacific Railroad line. During the period from 1906 until the early 1950s, Carlin was an important icing station in Nevada for refrigerator cars on both the Southern and Western Pacific Railroads. Western Pacific reached Carlin from the east in 1908, but freight and passenger service was not inaugurated over this transcontinental line until 1910. Nevada State Historical Marker, number 112. So now, let's turn around and travel west on Interstate 80. Once in Fernley, we will need to travel south towards Urington on US 95A. At a point of 10.5 miles north of Urington, we will find our next marker. Marker number 113, Wabuska. Wabuska. Wabuska, perhaps a Washoe Indian term for white grass, was first established in the early 1870s as a station on the stage and freight roads from Wadsworth on the Central Pacific to the roaring mining camps of Aurora, Bodie, Candelaria, Columbus, and Belleville. In 1881, the town served as the principal Mason Valley Supply and Distribution Center on the newly constructed narrow gauge Carson and Colorado Railroad. Southern Pacific purchased the railroad and converted it to standard gauge at the beginning of the 20th century. Tonopah and Goldfield mining booms greatly increased freight and passenger traffic. When copper was discovered in Mason Valley, the town became the northern terminus of the new Nevada Copper Belt Railroad, built 1909-1911. Wabuska waned with declining mining activity in the 1920s. Nevada State Historical Marker, number 113. Turning around now, we need to travel northwest to Washoe Valley. Located on old US 395, we find our next marker, marker number 114, Franktown. Franktown. Orson Hyde, probate judge of Carson County, Utah Territory, founded Franktown in the Wasu, Washoe Valley in 1855. A sawmill became an important enterprise in furnishing timber to the Comstock mines after 1859. The doll mill, a quartz mill of 60 stamps, employed hundreds of workers. Fertile farms surrounded the town. With the completion of the railroad from Carson City to Virginia City in 1869, the milling business rapidly lost its importance and the once prosperous town declined. Nevada State Historical Marker, number 114. 
So now let's head east and get onto US 95 and travel south towards Pahrump. Once at the junction for State Route 160 for Pahrump, we will continue on State Route 160 for about 61 miles. At that point, we would have arrived at our next marker, marker number 115, Potosi. Potosi, the desire of the Mormon settlements for economic self-sufficiency led to mining by missionaries for lead. In 1856, Nathaniel V. Jones was sent to recover ore from the mountain of lead, 30 miles southwest of the mission at Las Vegas Springs. About 9,000 pounds were recovered before smelting difficulties forced the remote mine to be abandoned in 1857. Potosi became the first abandoned mine in Nevada. In 1861, California mining interests reopened the mine, and a smelter and rock cabins of 100 busy miners made up the mining camp of Potosi. Even more extensive operations resulted after the Transcontinental Salt Lake and San Pedro Railroad, now Union Pacific, was built through the county in 1905. During World War I, Potosi was an important source of zinc. Nevada State Historical Marker number 115, 